assalam alaikum today we are going to discuss experiment number 7 of digital signal processing lab which is about discrete fourier transform properties and linear filtering methods based on dft using matlab the objective of this lab is to compute the dft its properties in linear filtering methods like circular convolution for finite length sequences the equipment required for this lab is matlab 2015 or above let's have an overview of dft given a finite duration sequence x of n of a finite length l then it has fourier transform given by this formula we have summation from n is equal to 0 till l minus 1 x of n is multiplied by with this complex exponential e raised to power minus j omega n this gives you the x of omega fourier transform of x of n omega can vary from 0 to 2 pi and after this duration they are going to be the repetition of the same uh, samples if we sample if we further sample x of omega at equally spaced frequencies which is given as omega k is equal to 2 pi k divided by n where k can vary from 0 till capital n minus 1 and n is basically greater than or equal to the length of the finite sequence x of n then the resultant samples are given by the expressions x of k is equal to small n it varies from 0 till n minus 1 x of n multiplied by a complex exponential e raised to power minus j 2 pi k n divided by capital n where k varies from 0 till n minus 1 here are two variations one n 0 to n minus 1 and then there is k 0 to n minus 1 since the frequency samples are obtained by evaluating the fourier transform x of omega of x of n at a set of equally spaced capital n discrete frequencies x of k is called dft the discrete fourier transform of x of n to get x of n back from x of k frequency samples we have the following formula you can recover the original signal discrete signal x of n from x of k as follows x of n is equal to 1 divided by n summation goes from k is equal to 0 till capital n minus 1 x of k being multiplied by with this complex exponential a raised to power j 2 pi k n divided by capital n where small n varies from 0 to n minus 1 this is called inverse discrete fourier transform let's define discrete fourier transform using matlab first of all compute n point discrete fourier transform of a user defined sequence and then plot its magnitude and phase we are going to define capital n from the user using the command input n which is going to be used for n point dft is taken as this then we are going to take input from the user the sequence for which we want dft to be calculated x is taken from the user using the command input then we are going to define an array small n which is varying from 0 till capital n minus 1 and k also varies from 0 to n minus 1 so that's why k is also equal to n then we are going to define omega n as exponential e raised to power minus j 2 pi whole divided by capital n this whole array is going to be a complex vector then we are going to define another vector nk which is basically the multiplication of n transpose with k it is going to form a matrix then this matrix is going to be multiplied with this omega n omega n nk is a new vector which is multiplication of omega n vector with the matrix nk this whole 
matrix is two dimensional which is giving you the dft then x of k is given as x multiplied by omega n n k here what is important is that the multiplication is matrix multiplication not element by element multiplication x was one vector which is multiplied by this matrix so as a result we are going to get a vector x k then we can use abs absolute command to get the magnitude of dft of x of n and angle command to get the phase of dft of x of n these are defined as follows the angle is multiplied by 180 divided by pi to get the phase of the dft then we are going to define we are going to then we are going to plot these uh, magnitude and phases calculated here using the command subplot and plot to get this plot on the same window here is another example of circular convolution using discrete Fourier transform and inverse discrete Fourier transform for any two user defined sequences circular convolution is a property of discrete Fourier transform which is going to be implemented in MATLAB as follows. Let x1 be a vector defined by the user using the command input. x2 be the second sequence which is also defined by the user using the command input. n be the number of points of DFT which are going to be used also defined by the user. Then we are going to display the sequence x1 and sequence x2 using the command stem which is because x1 and x2 both are of the nature discrete. Then we are going to define n1 with the length of sequence x1, n2 with the sequence or length of the sequence x2, and m with the vector, m with the number, which is going to be the length of linear convolution, which is n1 plus n2 minus 1. Then we are going to define two vectors x and y which are going to be of the length m by using zero padding. x1 is going to be embedded in vector x, x2 is going to be embedded in vector y and then rest of the entries are zeros using this uh, routine. Then we are going to take the dft of x and dft of y using the command fft you can type help fft in command window to see how fft can perform dft so the, let's proceed fft of vector x with m points is going to be saved in this vector and fft of y with points m is going to be saved in this vector then you know that it is a property of DFT that convolution in time domain is multiplication in frequency domain. So here we are going to multiply X FFT and Y FFT together. Point wise multiplication is implemented here. You can see dot operator. Then this DFT XY is going to be taken back into the time domain using the command IFFT. You can also look out for this command in the same manner as FFT. You can type help space IFFT in command window to explore this command. Then this YN is going to be plotted using the command stem. You can see the circular convolution is done using the DFT. Here are some finite sequences given to you g of n, h of n are as follows, x of n and y of n are as follows. You can perform the circular convolution of these sequences via DFT based approach and then analyze the circular convolution. You can also do the circular convolution manually and compare your results with the MATLAB. Then here we are going to perform some extra tasks. Here you are going to compute 20 point inverse discrete Fourier transform to get x of n back 
from the k point dft sequence given below k is 10 you are given x of k dft is given to you you are going to have 20 point inverse discrete fourier transform to achieve x of n you have the formula with you guys which is mentioned in the slides previously you can use that routine to implement and get the x of n from the x of k here are some post lab tasks which you will be performing and submitting with all the code and graphs you are going to calculate the symbolic convolution between the following pairs of the functions you have to compute eight point circular convolution for following sequence x1 be the sequence defined by this expression sine 3 pi n divided by 8 where n varies from 0 to 7 and x2 be all four ones and all four zeros be the sequence these two are finite sequences you are going to perform eight point circular convolution for this you have the routine in your slides you can use that to compute the circular convolution for these two specific sequences then there is another task for you guys you, you can compute the quantity summation n goes to n minus 1 x1 of n multiplied by x2 of n for user defined n for the following pair of sequence x1 be the sequence as delta of n plus delta of n minus 8 and x2 be the sequence u of n minus u of n minus capital N n is user defined you can enter any n you want and then you can compute this specific quantity you have x1 of n you have x2 of n you can compute this summation uh, and for this any user defined capital n for any curious you can always consult me thank you guys allah hafiz